Okay guys, have you ever heard about prepping rules actually being myths? There are some out there, even guidelines that even preppers adhere to. And with life and a lot of things, there is no black and white. There's no yes or no, right or wrong. A lot of times there's gray areas. Here we're gonna go over five prepping rules that are actually myths. That's right, prepping is no different. There is nuance and circumstances to consider. Some of these may surprise you, but we're gonna go over them and help you get it right. Welcome back to all of our subscribers and thank you for watching. If you're brand new here, like news that affects you, emergency preparedness tips and how to's weekly, be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Let's jump into this one. The last thing you need is to think that you know something about a prepping rule and actually it's a myth. So put on your seatbelt. Let's get through these five prepping myths and get you the correct answers. So that's right five prepping rules that are actually myths. And I wanna give a shout out to the Lost Superfoods who puts out great publications in which that's where I source some of this great information. Put one on the list. Dehydrated meals last 25 years. Preppers put a lot of merit on their food storage, as they should. But you gotta remember, it's gonna take a lot of food to survive a full-on collapse. Thanks to the internet, you can order tons of it. Luckily for preppers and people that are into emergency preparedness, there is no shortage of freeze-dried food and long-term food storage type foods out there. Where the question comes in is when we start talking about 25 years to 30 year shelf life. The thing that we can agree on is good food is not meant to sit around for three decades. And we aren't expecting that survival food to be the best thing on the plate. But still, a lot of these companies are advertising 25 year shelf life. What they rarely mention is that keeping your food storage at temperatures of 55 degrees Fahrenheit or less most companies will spend the large print on the promise. Of course, this changes everything. Who has the perfectly controlled climate room for their food storage? So in all reality, you might be storing that food for a long time, but it's not gonna last as long as you think. So how do you get this right, you might ask? It's rotation. It's all about rotating your food supply. So there's very few preppers that can keep their food stored at a constant perfect temperature. You have to keep your preps constantly in rotation and eating what you're storing up. If you're gonna be good at rotation, you need to be buying things that you're always gonna be using and you need to be rotating them. If it's more short term, couple years to five years, and you think SHTF will happen, then you aren't gonna really care what you're eating as long as you're eating. Use what you buy and rotate it. You find those sales on items, great. Use them, but only buy on the stuff on sale that you'll actually use if you actually wanna be a master at this. So the myth is not all foods that say that they're gonna last 25 years, necessarily last 25 years and are good. Myth number two, bug out. One of the things that are just not thought through very well, making it one of the big myths of prepping is bug out. As it is a cornerstone for all preppers, bugging out, getting away, getting out of dodge, getting out of harm's way in a hurry. But for most preppers, it's a myth. The thing is, is this term gets passed around loosely. Bug out, bug out bag. Now, as hard as it is to find out good information on bugging out online, we did do a video right up here that gives you extra tips in case you had to bug out, in case you had to survive in the wilderness, because to bug out properly, you have to practice it. Though you may have the bug out bag checked off, it's more a survival bag, and I hope that it helps you survive a situation. To succeed at a bug out, you need to know the ins and outs of bugging out. And have you practiced it? How many people you think have successfully planned and practiced a bug out with the entire family, as most preppers haven't even made it as far as writing down their bug out plan. The bug out is by far the most simplified bug out rule. You have to have a plan, know the plan, know alternate options to do, and practice it. If you find that your initial bug out location is compromised, there are things like routes that need to be considered, rally points, catches, of course, alternative routes. That's right. You need to have a thorough written down bug out process. So how do you fix it? How do you turn this myth into a reality? Here's a quick 10 step list from the Lost Superfoods. Number one, print an eight by 10 map of your neighborhood, town, city, and your bug out location. Number two, looking at the maps, decide on two short distant bug out areas you can travel five miles or less to escape danger. Number three, now seek out two locations that are 20 miles or more away from the mark and put marks on those on the map. Number four, plot your courses on these maps to each bug out location. 
Number five, notate food, water, and other resources along the way. Number six, notate locations to bury catches. Number seven, notate rally points. Number eight, place all this info into a binder. Number nine, put your bag on this weekend and go find a spot. Number 10, come home and start modifying your plan to deal with real world issues you can find on your treks. Moving on to number three, successful and sustainable foraging. Now, if you haven't gotten into foraging food, foraging food is a lot of fun. Learning what's out there that you can eat, not only eat, but medicinal foraging is super rewarding and you want to know who's the master at it a lot of homesteaders know how to be great foragers in fact a lot of homesteaders are taking action when in reality a lot of preppers are just thinking about it in fact if more preppers diligently studied foraging and practice it in their areas they would be better equipped in the wild they would also better understand its limits remember not to lean on foraging alone more so use it as a bridge between meals while you're trying to catch a fish or set a trap for an animal if a prepper intends on making it on foraging alone starvation is a high possibility and more importantly these resources will be gone once you consume them you can eat all the berries cattails and leaves that you want but it will not sustain you like fish and like meat. And that's a fundamental issue with foraging. With that, foraging alone will never sustain you or your family alone. So it's not the studying of foraging that's the myth. So how do you put this myth in the right place? To get foraging right, you must give it a lot of time and practice. You must read, see, handle, and taste these wild foods. You need to know which one you would like and how your body reacts to them. This is crucial. Foraging is a subsidy, and you need to treat it just like that. Do not spend your entire day foraging unless you have protein traps set, meat smoked, or some other method of getting better nutrition. Wild foods deserve your attention and respect, but plants and seeds won't get you through the long haul. Myth number four, when it comes to prepping for martial law or overbearing militant government rule is one of the most popular post-apocalyptic themes in all of prepping. A major prepper idea of a post-apocalyptic government that will gather together a mighty, well-armed, organized force to monitor the metro areas. They say, where would this great force come from? Who would it be? And how would they be able to monitor and control 300 million people? Most would say is just not a reality. Most say sending the military into those metro areas or those neighborhoods to control the population, confiscate guns, install curfews. They say that would be just suicide, making nationwide martial law most probable a myth. There will be some semblance of law struggling to stay in power. This will be true of all locations. In this event, your family will be at risk. You will have individuals that have been given too much power or desperate people making decisions to keep order. Murder without justice is what I mean. Rather than preparing for nationwide martial law, you must be prepared to gather emergency intelligence using things like a police scanner or a shortwave radio, HD camera drones, so that if you get your cues and find out that the police are disbanding, it's time to hit the road or head to one of those short-term bug out locations we talked about earlier. Number five, tactical training. So no one person is a match for a armed gang of thugs, but most have a weakness that are not talked about on all forums online, and it's that you have a family. One way to look at it is as a fighting force engages a target, there are acceptable casualties. As a prepper, you do not have acceptable casualties. You have a wife, you have pets, you have kids, little Tommy, little Susie. You're not even going to want to lose your brother-in-law. And the sketchy thing is, is that gang of thugs that's armed do not share the same sentiment. While all the tactical drills and training can be helpful, so if you're a prepper out there daydreaming about your 300 blackout, your body armor, all your tactical training, you should be putting more focus on getting away, being safe, and being fed. In all reality, you're gonna be moving away from the conflict, not wanting to engage in confrontation, avoiding all altercations, making that the start of how you're gonna get this one right. You're probably not a war hero. You're probably a father, a husband, a grandfather, a wife, and so on. Don't put people that you love in danger by taking unnecessary risks. You may wanna focus more on SERE training to avoid capture and detection. As all that tactical training is helpful, more so as a defense, as being offensive and aggressive, will most likely not end well. To be tactical as a family leader and a prepper, focus on communication, intelligence, 
and stealth. Anyway, guys, shout out to Lost Superfoods newsletter on that one. Hope that helped you guys with a few myths with prepping. And until next time, keep prepping, keep learning, keep doing, guys. We'll see you on the next one.